Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at how to mine Salvium, a random X algorithm type token that is only CPU mineable. It's been out for quite a bit, and we're going to be going over how to mine it, you know, obviously how to set up your wallet, how to mine it, and a couple of things that I'm going to call out in this video, so stay tuned. But uh, their website is salvium.io, right? And they say here, cutting edge proof of work blockchain with privacy, uh, obviously being at the forefront, DeFi, staking, uh, and stakers earn 20% of the block reward. While this isn't a project review video, and I want to focus on the wallets, uh, let's go straight to that. The wallet available options right now are CLI wallet. That's what a lot of people have been using, or they've been mining directly to an exchange. However, I do not recommend doing that. Trade Ogre, 7Cs, Zagax, whatever it might be. Uh, the CLI wallet is one I would recommend, but not installing it on your day-to-day -day system. However, they did come out with a GUI wallet just recently, which we'll cover here in just a moment. Uh, once you identify your wallet, what pool are you going to mine on? Well, Cryptex is the pool that I'm going to be choosing for this video, and a huge thank you to them for supporting small content creators like myself. So we see all the stratum ports and everything that we need right here. Uh, it's just pool cryptex.com forward slash sal sam alpha lima uh so that's all the information we need we can even see our profitability right here it's not as profitable as some of the other options uh as far as random x mining on your cpu um but again you got to go back to your convictions do you believe in the project what the project's doing so on and so forth and whether or not you want to stack a bag of it uh for the future profitability that might come all the pools that are available are out there on miningpoolstats.stream. Of course, Hero Miners is number one. Our plant was number one at the very beginning, but Hero Miners has taken it over. Now, we do have a good spread of hash rate. If I move out of your way, we can see Hero Miners is at 44.9. Our plant's at 26.2. Hash Vault Pro at 12.5. And Cryptex uh, is not showing a percentage, but it's right below, like, I think, 7 6%. And the benefit here of using a pool that isn't number one is that while the payout frequency might be smaller or excuse me further out right so you are not getting paid as often but when you do get paid you're getting paid much more you're still going to make just as much as you would if you run on the pool uh with all the hash rate but just keep your hash rate spread out and do as best as you can now the gui wallet is out they're on version 0.4.4 beta one now i haven't had an opportunity to run this through the yeti dot uh uk auditing system but i do have some information about it and what we did is we looked at this original one the cli wallet which is version 0 0.41 um and we could see here that obviously because it's crypto note right uh the antivirus programs that are out there or the various uh i guess you could say antivirus signatures are basically saying it's malicious because it's a coin miner and you can see coin miner application crypto suspicious archive blah 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 so it's false positives but i don't since i haven't been able to go into in great detail yeti or myself i wouldn't install this on your day-to-day -day system and then looking at the accuracy of our ai model uh scanning this particular software there's, there's three things in the cli wallet there's the d like we're used to the d.exe uh, salvium d.exe we see that a lot in these wallets and then you have the cli and then you have the rpc.exe uh, the 55 percent accuracy is okay but i would like to see 65 so on and so forth but this is the first time uh our particular scanning solution has bumped into this particular uh wallet or gui as it continues to learn the better it will be so we went and checked also the gui option which is 4.4.4 beta and it has a low score as well. Again, a lot of false positives here because of the signatures or the various outlets available. Uh, but it does have around the same 55% accuracy uh, scale. Now, this one does say malicious, if I move out of your way, while this one says false positives. So the CLA wallet is throwing out false positives, while the GUI wallet is throwing malicious. And what's funny is, is if you go to that GUI wallet, look what the dev writes at the very top here. Use at your own peril. So this is probably why a lot of people mine directly to exchanges, even though I recommend not doing so. It's because they'd rather just take a risk mining to an exchange than to download a wallet that is unsafe. But if you can install this on a environment, right, a VM or a segregated system separate from your network and everything, then there's no way it can hop from system to system and so on and so forth. Just a separated, isolated environment, then you should be good to go. You can install the wallet, you can mine to it, and 
do whatever you want with it, send the funds to exchange later, whatever it might be. But just heed my warnings. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes. A lot of my colleagues have made videos about this. Uh, Rabid Mining, uh, that one Techie King, uh, Argent Miner, so many others have made videos about mining Salvium, but they haven't shown videos of mining Salvium on Cryptex. So Cryptex, we got the pool. We got to get the wallet. Even though the main desktop wallet is not shown on the website yet, it says coming soon. If we go to the GitHub, which will be linked down below, you can see the beta version. And I have that already pulled up. This is what the beta version looks like. Your antivirus will warn you about the wallet. So again, using this at your own risk. But if we hit continue, right, we can choose our languages, whatever it might be. Hit continue. And we got simple mode, simple mode, bootstrap, or advanced mode. Now, advanced mode includes extra features like mining and message verification. So I can mine through the GUI wallet. And what's familiar with this is Monero GUI wallet, right? Like I could use the Monero GUI wallet and mine with my CPU, mine some Monero while also keeping my node in sync with the network. So it's going to be up to you or you can use portable mode, create portable wallets and use them on any PC, enable, uh, enable if you install Monero on a USB stick, an external drive or other portable storage medium. So same features that I'm familiar with when using Monero. In this particular case, we're just going to go with advanced mode. And now we can create a wallet. We can create a new wallet from a hardware wallet, which is kind of interesting because you can see here, it says connect your hardware wallet to create a new Monero wallet. It's not saying Salvium, it's saying Monero wallet. Uh, so this is basically a software fork of the Monero GUI wallet uh, with some revisions done, obviously the branding change, so on and so forth. Or we can open uh, a wallet from file or restore using seed phrase. In this case, we're just going to create a new wallet, choose the directory where we want it to go, hit next, and then there's our seed phrase. Go ahead and steal that if you want. There'll be no funds in this particular wallet. So you can copy the uh, clipboard, you can create a new seed phrase, or you can print as a template. We're just going to copy because we know they're going to validate or verify that we do in fact have our seed phrase backed up. If you do not, and you just hit next and it goes to ask you to answer you don't know the answer you're going to be stuck like chuck so just back it up somewhere safe i don't like keeping it on a system uh, where i use a lot of txt files or anything like that or excuse me my day-to-day -day system and just plain text because you could be at risk if that system gets compromised uh, obviously you could write it down on a notepad but if you lose the notepad you're sol so you got to find the best solution for you and there we go we got our seed phrase all squared away next now put in a password of your choosing. In this case, we're just gonna go ahead and do something silly and easy. Use this color grade, you know, strength, a medium, high, low to help you out and making sure you're good, choosing a good password, please. And then now we can start node automatically in background, which is recommended, leaving everything on default, or we can basically choose where we want the blockchain to sync by clicking the browse button. Uh, and we can also add remote IPs or uh, different nodes and ports that we can connect to if we want to. In this case, we're not going to put it in a specific folder. We're just going to go ahead and go with the default and hit next. And now it's on mainnet. We see the directory that the blockchain is going to be syncing. The language is in English, create wallet. And now we got to type in the wallet password that we just created. And it's going to take time for the daemon to sync up, let the wallet nodes, everything sync up. Uh, it's going to take a minute. While it's not connected to daemon, start daemon, start in local node in eight seconds. So it's it's starting up. Just give it some time, let the node and everything sync up. And we're gonna need to get our receiving address. While it's connected to daemon, keeps disconnecting, connecting because of the beta version. But if we go to receive, we have our receiving address. Now, security warning, just in case you have yours popping up on your computer, I usually turn mine off. But Windows Firewall has blocked some features of Salvium D on all public and private. Do we want to allow? We get show more. We could see, do we want it on public or private? We're going to go ahead and put private only, allow, not public. And then it, that should allow the daemon to sync up. D stands for daemon, by the way. Um, but now we our wallet should be syncing with the network. You can see it synchronizing in the bottom left here. And we can copy our address. And make sure that we have that somewhere safe because we're going to need that to set up our miner. Now, what miner would you like to use? Well, Cryptex makes it nice and easy. Not only do they have a hash rate calculator right here where we can see we're making about 65 cents USD mining salvium at 17.88 kilohash. But we could also uh, see the startup guide. If we scroll on down, there's XMR rig and SRB miner. In this case, we're going to use SRB. So Google.com search SRB miner. Should be the first one. Yes, they have a website, but I always go to their GitHub, as I always mention. 
And version 2.61 is the one we need. So we just download the one appropriate to our operating system and extract that. And then once we have it extracted, uh, we should be able to use, if it's Salvium's not in here already, we could always use another CPU mineable token that uses the algorithm random X to configure this particular cryptocurrency. So in this case, we're gonna right click on start mining in Monero, edit in Notepad. We're gonna leave everything the same, but we're gonna go ahead and update our server. We're gonna use the TCP port 7777. I don't know how many sevens that was, but there you go. And then we're going to grab our wallet that we have here. So copy, put that in, and any additional commands that you want to add for your CPU. You can see right now it has disabled GPU because this is a CPU only uh, mineable token. Uh, but we can always go back to Google, as I always do, and type in SRB miner commands to see any of the parameters that we want to add to our CPU mineable token where we could set the number of threads, the intensity, the affinity, so on and so forth. Uh, I like to keep mine, because I have a 16 core, 24 thread CPU, I like to keep mine, especially because I utilize my CPU uh, while mining, I probably want to keep mine more around 12, 24 threads, right? So 12, using 12 cores, 24 threads, but some people like to max it out at 16, 32. If you don't put any other commands in there, it will use all threads on your CPU. But we can leave it just like that, just for this video. We're gonna hit File, Save As, and give it a different name, just so we know what it is. So I like to start off with the pool that I'm mining to, and you can set it up however you want, but this is just the way I do it, .bat, right? So Cryptex is the pool I'm mining to, Salvium, the cryptocurrency, .bat, save. And now if we go back to our SRB miner, you will see that we have a new file. Scroll on down, there it is. And if I start that up, you're about to see the CPU take a hit. There it is, you can see all of them are being pushed to the absolute limit. The video might get a little bit choppy, but we are hashing away. And then we can take our same address that we have put into our miner and go ahead and find it. But the Quick start guide on Cryptex makes it super easy. You just put in your worker name, put in your wallet address, come down here, choose whichever miner you're using, XMR rig or SRB miner, copy, add that to your batch file, and you are good to go. And then you can go and track the progress of your miner via the pool. We click on pool hash rate and then put in our address. We click on pool hash rate at the top here. It was on the previous page, right? We're in the information section, now pool hash rate. Put in our address and search, and slowly but surely, we will see our workers come online. Just give us some time, be patient, and you'll see the hash rates, the payouts, and you can adjust the settings however you might like it, but you got to wait for the data to show up, okay? It's going to take a minute, but it will get done. So you can see here, test is the worker name that I'm using. The default was the one where I didn't set a worker name. You can see which version of the miner we're on. Cryptex pools make it very easy to not only manage your miners but monitor you can even monitor if you look in the upper right here monitor bot i believe it's a telegram bot yep sure enough we can open in web and we can set up monitors to help call to us hey something's going on hash rate dropped off miner offline worker offline whatever it might be cryptex pools makes it very easy and this is not the only token that is mineable through them they got bitcoin iron alfium caspo all the big ones out there carlson uh pyron so much more and more being added but Another random X token has entered the market. And again, it's not as profitable. And let's leave you with that last little bit. It's not as profitable. Say we're on the 7950X on the CPU that we're using to record this video. It's not as profitable as Zephyr or Quantum RL or Monero or Raptorium. It has fallen off quite a bit. But if you got it in the earlier stages when this token first came out, um, it would have been a little bit more profitable. But again, weigh out what you believe in and what projects you have strong convictions in. And do they have a future and maybe you can gain an advantage by mining a cryptocurrency that not everybody is looking at, but may pop off later on in the future. So there we are. Things are not running too well because I, again, am recording while mining. But that's how you set it up on Windows. Hivon, let's do a quick Hivon setup and I'll let you go. I am not seeing Salvium in here as one of the tickers just yet, but we can always use Monero... Uh, I believe any other token that supports random X, some narrow Zephyr, Quantum RL, 
all that good stuff. Not a Ghost Rider token like Raptorium or Reaction, but one of the Monero ones. So let's go choose Zephyr. Uh, let's go ahead and add a new wallet. We're going to put in our wallet address and then give it a name, just making sure that we know the difference between this and all the other ones. Select pool. We're going to choose Cryptex and we're probably going to want to configure in minor. So configure in minor and then choose SRB setup. And so we're going to add our wallet, our worker name. Need to go back and grab that server port and information. So there it is off of Cryptex pools. Password, we're going to leave that alone. And then go ahead and put this in here just like that. So this is how I would get it set up for my CPU if I was having my CPU rig on Hivon. Uh, again, I put in the wallet, named it Salvium. So parentheses, wall, W-A-L parentheses, worker name, we could leave that alone. There's the server or the pool that we're going to be mined to in the port. Password, apply changes, give it a good name so you know. We're just using the algorithm from Zeph, which is RandomX, with our miner, and we will be up and running. If you're running into any errors or issues, uh, please help each other out in the comments. But it's just that simple, very easy to do. So set up for Windows, set up for uh, Hivon. It does raise some concerns, uh, especially with the GUI beta version. Uh, so just use this on a segregated, separated desktop environment or VM environment, whichever you prefer. Um, otherwise, my two exchanges is what everybody else is doing. However, I do not recommend that for security reasons. Or you might just wind up mining too low of an amount and then getting hit or not getting the credit for the payments that you should be receiving. So there's cash 22s, pros and cons to everything. Just trade carefully and a huge thank you to Cryptex Pools for supporting content creators, small and big, all around the community as a whole. And thank you so much for stopping by. Do me a favor on the way out. Hit that like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification button to stay up to date as well as check out additional links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And you just have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you next one.